Um, our first speaker, speaker is Brianna Goodwin. She's a data scientist at Microsoft and was formerly a research engineer at the Mayo Clinic. Here at Husky Adapt, we know her better as the student who led the charge to make Husky Adapt a registered student organization, which really increased the number of student leaders that were involved and transformed the initial structure of Husky Adapt into the form that you see today. Um, so we're very thankful to her for that and all the other things she did for Husky Adapt. Um, and without further ado, I'll hand it off to her and let her uh, tell you much more. Awesome. Well, thanks, Molly. Let me just start sharing my screen. Um, well, I'm super excited to be here with all of you today. Um, I'm kind of planning on telling you a little bit about my education and then what I'm doing now. Um, so before coming to UW, I went to undergrad at Oregon State. And while at Oregon State, I was trying to, I kind of started and I wanted to find a major that um, I made a difference in people's lives and kind of focusing on my biology, but I wasn't really sure what that actually meant. So I changed my major a couple years, a couple times, and I ended up um, settling in on uh, getting my bachelor's in mechanical engineering with a minor in exercise physiology. And so with this, I was kind of able to tailor what I wanted to learn and kind of pick and choose the pieces of um, the curriculum that I found um, really most interesting. Um, through this, I also got involved with Go Baby Go. And for those of you who are not aware, this is a program um, across the United States that really helps to, or it adapts um, ride along cars for kids to use um, and really to promote play, similar to some of the toy adaptation events, which I'm sure a lot of you have been a part of. Um, but the project that I worked on was really um, aimed at increasing weight bearing for kids who maybe um, did not or could not um, weight bear. And so the car was set to only drive when a kid was standing up. And so it would, they would be able to engage and play when they were standing and hopefully promote some um, weight bearing tendencies. So this really, this project really gave me um, a passion for working in accessibility. Um, when I graduated from Oregon State, I realized that I didn't really have the skills that I wanted to get the job that I wanted. Um, so that's what led me to come to grad school at UW. And while I was there, um, I worked with Dr. Kat Steele um, and I worked at Seattle Children's Hospital. And we used um, wearable sensors, accelerometers to understand how kids with cerebral palsy um, moved before, during and after um, a therapy that they got. And it was a really exciting project for me because it was really the first time that I'd worked on a research project using um, human subjects and also working in, um, in the hospital setting with OTs. And it really gave me this passion for using real world data, but also um, working with clinicians and kind of this paired approach of engineering and um, clinical care to improve best practices. And then also while I was at the UW, um, I kind of came in with this idea that I wanted to start a Go Baby Go program, similar to what I was um, aware of at, uh, from OSU. But I got connected to some really awesome students and faculty who were also passionate about toy adaptation and accessible design. And so together, we were able to create Husky Adapt. And it's um, really cool to be back and kind of see what it's evolved in and what all of you um, are a part of and continuing to make it even better. Um, some of my favorite events that we got to do were some of the outreach events. Um, this picture here is um, of an outreach event that we did. And then I also really liked when we would have panel events and invite in people um, who had disabilities to kind of come and share their experiences both on campus and off campus. And I remember always walking away thinking that I'd learned so much and I had a better perspective on um, things that I could do better as an engineer and better just as a human. Um, so I'm really grateful for that experience. I also got to work on a project um, where we went into a local high school and we taught um, some juniors and seniors how to adapt um, Go Baby Go cars and all about accessible technology, um, but also help them adapt them for kids with um, certain, certain needs. And so the high school students really got to focus on learning about accessible technology, but also working on these design principles. And that was a really awesome way to kind of give back and think about things that I loved um, and work with um, younger students as well. So after grad school, I decided to move to the great frozen land of Rochester, Minnesota. 
um, where it got down to like negative 50. It was wild with the wind chill. Um, but I took a job as a research engineer at the Mayo Clinic. Um, and I got to work on some awesome research projects with some really incredibly smart people. So one of the projects that we worked on, or the main project I worked on, we know that individuals with um, spinal cord injuries who use a manual wheelchair are at a higher prevalence for shoulder pain and pathology. Um, and so we wanted to understand what specifically they were doing out um, in the free living environment that might be contributing to this um, increased pain and pathology. And so I got to work um, really thinking about what metrics actually matter and coming up with some metrics for risk and recovery from wearable sensor data that was um, pretty novel and hadn't been done before. So that was um, a really exciting project. Another project that I got to work on, um, we also know that people with spinal cord injuries are more likely to have pressure injuries. Um, so think about if you're sitting down all day and you're like, um, if you're not moving at all, you can be more likely to kind of have pressure buildup um, where in the areas that you're sitting on. And if um, people with spinal cord injuries often can't feel their bottoms. And so they have these, these pressure buildups and then don't know that it's happening. And so there was a group that um, built this, it's like a pressure mat here. Um, and it wirelessly sends data to a phone and then you can uh, kind of see your pressure and then the system can also give weight shift reminders to remind people that, hey, you need to shift to kind of offload some of that pressure. And so what we did was um, took some of that data and then tried to understand how they were actually using the system and breaking it down over the entire day. Um, so really looking at some novel visualization metrics um, to understand maybe what's important and how people actually want to use the system, which is incredibly important if you want a product to be um, used out in the field. Um, through all of this, I got to do a lot of writing and some publishing, which was really exciting. Um, and that's kind of, I guess, uh, on this panel, I kind of represent maybe more of a research trajectory. Um, so that's kind of shown here. And recently I um, moved back to Seattle and I'm now a data scientist at Microsoft and I'm working on the precision population health team. And the idea here is that we're taking individual level data and using that data to improve community level care and then using that community level care to um, increase care for an individual. So it's kind of like the cyclical pattern. And this might sound kind of like ambiguous, it's still ambiguous to me. So what does this actually like look like in reality is we're looking at different procedure rates for different groups and understanding how they change over time. Um, and then also looking at geographic variation so what, what regions have higher rates and why do they have higher rates and should they have higher rates and can we do something about that? So creating dashboards to um, understand that and understand how these rates change over time is kind of where I'm at now. And so when I was thinking about what I wanted all of you to take away from um, my presentation, I kind of put a slide together um, thinking about what I wish I knew a few years ago. Um, and so the first thing that really came to mind for me was that careers paths are not linear and there's nothing wrong with that. If you would have asked me kind of where I thought I would be um, in undergrad, five years, 10 years down the line, it would not have been here. Um, and so just acknowledging that and that's okay. I think another thing is that it's okay to not always know the answer. It's another thing to not ask the question. I think that we all learn so much from um, you asking a question or when each other ask a question. And so that's just a really important thing to take forward. Um, another thing is that, at least for me, I was terrified of networking at conferences. Um, I remember being an undergrad and going to my first conference and just being terrified to talk to people. But I think when you kind of push yourself out of that comfort zone, you're able to meet some really awesome people. And I actually got a job through networking at a conference, so it does happen. And the final thing I wanna um, kind of leave you with for this part of the presentation is that what has made you successful in the past won't always do it in the future. And the idea there is that um, you're always learning after you leave school. It's kind of this growth, growth mindset and lifelong learner type of mentality. Type of mentality. Um, so just to 
keep that in mind when you leave school. It's not all over. You haven't figured everything out. I still learn like five new things every day and I'm grateful for those new things. Um, but yeah. And thank you um, for inviting me again. That'll turn it back to Molly.